I like when people meet someone who's infamous, they're like, no, she was cool with me. I'm like, like, oh yeah, I met Artie Lang. We didn't do heroin together. <laughs> no, he was cool. Like we didn't, he didn't even ask me if I wanted to do heroin with him. Okay. Yeah, he's cool. He's cool like that. Anyway. I really enjoyed Artie's podcast talking about Norm because he told the same stories about Norm he's been telling for 20 years now. <laughs> Haven't heard those before, Artie. Go into those, you know. What was your thing? Goodwill Smith? <laughs> How'd that one go? I was just, uh, I, 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 you know, it's, on Mad TV they would often like, right. like parody. Mine two things. I so, pitched a thing yeah, called Goodwill Good Smith. Goodwill Smith. All and right. He worked at an all black college, and you know the the <laughs> the problem on the blackboard that right. no one could solve was two plus two. <laughs> <laughs> Then <laughs> Will Smith plays a janitor who puts a four, and they go, who, who solved this? <laughs> it took us, it took the professors eight years to figure this one out. <laughs> they rejected it. They said it was, like, racist. <laughs> If anyone could just, it's the sad part is Norm never really told the truth about anything. And so you never know what really, what, but what happened with Don Olmeyer? Like Norm's, I mean, Artie's version was he, or Don Olmeyer called um, Norm into his office where on, on Letterman show, Norm said he called him on the phone. He had a call. And I, I, I don't see Don Olmeyer bringing, uh, Norm McDonald into his office to uh, fire him. I see. I see him calling him on the phone. At, you know, because there's no way he's going to bring a guy into his office. You don't fire a guy like that unless he's like been working for you for like 30 years. You just fire. You'd be like, you're fired, and tell somebody to fire him. And then if you want to talk to him, you don't bring him. In. But Artie's. That's why Artie's version is always like, is that what really happened, Artie? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Norm's dead, and Artie's not. So the point is that. The point is that, uh, but it would be nice if there was like a like an oral history of of Norm Macdonald's life that that like Lori Joe gave, like she and or someone gave that what actually happened, because between Norm and Artie, who the fuck knows, you know? Kevin, what was like like at the sports show? Like, how was your timeline? What time did you get in the, like to the studio? What time did Norm get there? Like, how did that all work? I don't even know if you're uh, fucking with me, but no, no, I want to know. I want to know. I'm curious. Like, no, you know what happened? No, you know what happened? Cause I, at the beginning I wasn't getting jokes on. And then after a while I was, cause I started doing warm up, and then Norm was like, Oh, Brennan's funny, I guess. So then I started, so then I would stay, then I would get there early. Cause I didn't have a family and my, my, my wife and kids were in New Jersey. So, uh, what was early have, for I, you? I didn't have a family. No, I would just be the first one there. What time's that? I don't know, like especially Sunday, because we would do the show on Monday. So Sunday was, you know, obviously the day before Monday. And I think we didn't have to be there till 12. But I would always get there early and like start the coffee to let everybody know. And then also if I was if I stayed late, sometimes we have this thing where we had a hand in the next morning or something. So I would like stay late. So Norm and Lloyd Joe could be like, who's who's making a racket in the in the coffee room? I'd be like. Oh, it's just old me. Because I was trying to get points in case they got picked up. I'd be like, remember, I, I would work later because everybody else would leave. You know, everybody else was like had job security or something. I don't know. I didn't want I want I just wanted to. I thought the show was fun and Norm was fun to work for because he's so fucking nuts, you know. And like Sean was saying the other day, most most hosts suck. You, could you imagine working for a fucking Jimmy Fallon or even Colbert now? They're. They're such babies and they're all such, they're all so, everything's so political now and they're all afraid. And Norm, I just watched Norm's uh, Conan. I'd never seen it. His first Conan where he did stand up. It's fucking great for how nonchalant he is. Have you seen it, Chad? Yeah, of course. I Tony. think it's on Coco. I think it's on Coco, whatever the fucking uh, Conan channel is on YouTube. But it's five minutes. It's that stupid dog thing where he buys that someone tells you you should buy a dog. So the guy goes, no, no, he said, buy this dog here. He says, this is a pit bull. It will protect your valuables, this dog, you know? And uh, 
I don't have anything valuable. I don't own anything. What do I look like? I own stuff. You know? It's five hundred dollars. He goes, "That'll be the most expensive thing I'll have uh, in my apartment." But that was like the only really killer joke of the whole set. But he talked five minutes about dogs. So the guy goes, "No, no." He says, "Buy this dog here." He says, "This is a pit bull. It will protect your valuables. This dog, you know." And uh, I buy the pit bull. That would be the most valuable thing I own. That'd be. That'd be the, that would be the thing. Then I have to buy something to protect it, you know? Then I'd be out, <laughs> be shopping for Wolverines the next day, you know? I'd be. I was like, this guy. And I remember I saw him, I didn't know him at the time, but I, when I did an evening at the improv, Norma's, Norma's on either on my show or the show before or after, because they would tape like two or three a day in Santa Monica. So I, I remember the dog bit, but when I saw him on Conan, I was like, man, that guy is fucking, he was like a kid. And he was just so, he was like taking his time. And I was like, he acted like, like he'd been doing his fucking uh, TV standup for like a, forever. I was like, I was very impressed with that. Cause everyone was, everyone when they do their first Conan or whatever is nervous, but Norm seemed like he was not nervous at all. So I think he's just blessed with the, gift of i i just can't care like if if it, like he like he couldn't care i mean he did care when you were from you could see he cared he, wa he wanted to get picked up he didn't he didn't want to get bad ratings but when i saw that cone i was like man that guy really had did have something different about him where he just didn't give a shit when he was on tv it was his first conan and i mean i don't know when we all did our first conans we were all kind of nervous you know I when was your first eight. Conan? Like, when did you do your first? Was it NBC? I was nervous, man. I guess was, I did it early on because I did it in like October or no, I think I did October or September, end of September. I think I did end, end of September in 1993. And they just started. They just started like three weeks or four weeks before. So, so Leno was still on Tonight Show when you did your Conan, right? I don't know. I don't know who was fucking. Yeah. I, yeah. No, it just, Conan had just started. So Leno had just started. Okay. Was that when they did Rotting Fruit Theater on Conan? I don't know. I'm not a Conan historian, but I will say. <laughs> Masturbating bear. I can say that was way before that. That was before. That was when they're going to get canceled at any minute. But I just watched. I was surprised at how fucking nonchalant Conan was. I mean, on Norm was on his first Conan. It's very impressive. I wouldn't recommend it because if, you, if you're not as, as something as, as, as Norm, you're going to look like an idiot. Thanks. Well, hey. Hello. No, no, you don't have to say hello. Uh, You're going to look like, why is this guy not trying at all? Why is this guy seem so nonchalant, you know? But, but you know, obviously, uh, so anyway, that was his gift. But he did care. He cared about, like, you know, he was competitive, so so he didn't want to, like, bomb. But that was, his, that was his way of doing it. I think it's probably that he's Canadian. Anyway, the point is that we're all, I think we're almost done, right? I'm really mailing it in like Jim and Sam style today. First of all, honey, first of all, don't I, I wouldn't have a baby unless you, is your wife have like a great job where uh, she can have a baby and then they have to take her back uh yeah she works in tv she works in tv in cleveland then that's and, perfect uh, and i always love when a woman gets a tv job then a, a month two months later she's like i'm pregnant because it's like perfect because it's like they can't fire her because if they fire her, then she she goes to the other she goes to the news and go i got fired i'm a news lady so they get these great jobs and then they then they get pregnant and that's why people don't want to hire women because as soon as you give a woman a decent job, she gets pregnant. And then she's like, yeah, you can't do nothing about it. Back in the day when you could, women, you know, women respected the way things worked. And that's why women shouldn't get equal pay. Yeah.